The new creation believer is not necessarily a Christian. You are a witness. And what that simply means is that the Holy Spirit is in you to prove that this thing is real. But in courtrooms, yes, you are a witness, but you need evidence for the case to be ruled in your favor. So you are allowed in the courtroom because you are a witness, so you can stand, right? You can stand to testify, but where is your evidence? So that testimony is your evidence. There are different ways you can get testimonies. You have a testimony of somebody in church who maybe got a financial miracle and all of that. You can stand and say, I saw that Jesus did this for brother so, so, so. I, it's evidence. We can see it. It happened to this person. So based on the fact that I can see, I'm testifying that this is true and it can happen for me. There's also the testimony of what God has done in your life. You, you saw it now, it's evidence. Jesus healed me. Jesus provided for me. I didn't have money. Jesus gave me money. Is it correct? So you can use that and say, okay, this is my evidence. There's also the evidence of scripture. It's written, sir. I can see it. So you can use that, right? You can take and say, based on this, Lord, I stand on this and I agree with your word. This is what you decree. This is what you declare and all of those kind of things. So you have what applied the witness of your testimony. The courts of heaven is designed to solve some of the toughest issues in life because it reveals the mystery of God as your help and favor. So you need like some form of interpretation, like some form of decoding or conversion. This is why in the courts, you need an interpreter. Now there are two interpreters, the priest and the Holy Spirit. The priest is your pastor. I think this was a point where the Holy Spirit actually rebuked me because I feel like sometimes we abuse the utility of the gift of pastors. I mean, pastor says, listen to accessing hidden treasures seven times. You listen to it once and you say, I don't have time. But the interpretation that you need for that solution is in that sermon. But you have missed it. So even though the verdict has been ruled, you've stood on your testimony. Oh yeah, decode the verdict. You can't because your life is it's not organized to utilize your pastor. Then you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. This court of heaven is a modality of prayer. Prayer is not in the equation of breakthrough. Prayer is in the equation of revelation. So there is the action component that is required to convert what you have received in the court is in heaven. Your ministry is on earth. The money you need is on earth. How do you make that conversion? It's actions, it's steps, it's strategies. So the Holy Spirit starts to tell you, this is the one you are supposed to do. This is the one you are supposed to do. Because you may be praying for the wrong reasons. The best utility of the courts of heaven or the courtrooms of heaven is to solve tough issues that hinder your life and destiny. Don't waste it. Don't waste courtroom sessions. God may have all the time. You don't. Courtrooms are designed to solve tough issues that hinder your life and destiny. Tough does not necessarily mean it's hard. It is tough because it has capacity to hinder you from fulfilling destiny. I just wanted to use this opportunity to commend you for a very wonderful analysis of what we've been learning for the past one month. It's actually good to hear you speak. And not only that, I think um, at one point I, I was thinking in my mind whether you were a lawyer or something, because you were, seriously, you deduced, you deduced everything in a way that I think I really got you very well, because it felt legal to me, apart from the fact that we are doing the courtrooms of heaven. I got the fact that there was something that they taught us in school, when you see a question, you break it down into issues. Then when you do break it down to the issues, you will now look for the principles of law. And then you will now do application. So that's why I said you did it exactly that way. So when you said, in this season, 
It, and it's good because it's arts. Because you, we are talking of the courtrooms of heaven, then why not be legal about it? So you, you, you first said, in this season, identify. That was your question. Identify the destiny. It's like identify the issue. And then you say, look at what, you know, identify also the things that will ordinarily not allow you to achieve that. So I broke down down to obstacles, right? And then you brought to the, you now brought to the fore the principles, which is the usual, you know, the usual response for anyone in this room to have to those obstacles. And that was the protocol, the witness, and the power. And then I believe that every one of us here should be able to apply that. And the application is what makes us different at the end of the day. So thank you very much. Talking about the courtroom and receiving a verdict, you know, after you've received the verdict, what we also call note of victory, and then you're supposed to return back. I'm using the fiscal courtroom setting on earth here. Imagine going to a court, the case has been settled and everything, the verdict has been given, and then you leave. What do you do as a believer when you've received the verdict, but you come back into reality and it hasn't manifested? I kind of know the answer, but I feel we should talk about it. What do you do? Do you go back to court again? Or what do you do? What God has said, it's yes, right? It's yes and amen, right? It's finished, it's settled, it's done. You are the only variable in the equation of your destiny. So think about your destiny like a mathematical equation, A plus B equals C. God is the constant. It's sure. You are the variable because you have choices, you have actions, you have decisions, so many things that can mess up the plan of God. So in any conversation, the question is always examine you, right? Um, that is the power of the interpreter. You have to be able to look at it. What did God say, right? This is what God said. Okay, um, what's happening now? Right? What's going on? So my personal, permit me to use the word personal um, protocol, is to always ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what ought I to do? I got it from Ephel. What ought I to do? That's the question. What ought I to do? Sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, call your pastor. You call your pastor. And you continue to take him. Sometimes it is, he shows you what's going on. Right? He said, but I told you to do this. Did you do it? But I if you remember the story that Apostle Bob shared on Sunday, when that issue, when that man had an issue of his wife, right, and they said he wasn't going to have that baby, the Holy Spirit said to remind Apostle Babs, like, you said you should do this. You, I told you to do this. Do this. Then that beautiful scripture in Job 33 is so powerful because what it means is that God sometimes is trying to get across to you, but you can't really hear. So it is the angel. He said, angel, the angel one in a thousand, if I can remember clearly. So it is the power of the interpreter that deconstructs sometimes, eh? This thing is a process. So it is that the verdict is yours. But okay, let's give for example, right? You, let me use marriage, right? Um, so they have said that you're going to get married. Marriage is not a problem. But uh, you are selfish, right? Let's just say. So you are selfish. So you don't have capacity, like even though you don't have capacity for it. Now, that selfishness is not necessarily because you want to be selfish. It was modeled to you, maybe from your background, your orientation. Don't, you, mindset, strongholds don't just go like that. It's a process. So the Holy Spirit starts to teach you. Maybe he says, you're going to practice the laws of giving. Oh yeah, you will give. You don't like to share your food. You will share your food. All of those little, little things, right? But the Holy Spirit now starts to take you on that journey to say the reformation that you need, right? So to have capacity to receive what God has already given you, the Holy Spirit will show you. And sometimes it's a dynamic process. Sometimes it's just one little thing you need to do. So I think that's where the power of the interpreter comes in. So with regards to the question, I think that you have answered like a part of it 
because it um, is speaking to what you answered is speaking to the believer, what the believer has to do. Um, I believe that another side of the question is like, like I've done everything. Why, why am I still looking at a contradiction in real life? And so um, to that, I would say Ephesians chapter 6, where the Bible says, haven't done all to stand. Yeah, so, and standing, it's, standing is like withstanding, you know. So to stand in this context would be to, because in that context of Ephesians 6, he was talking about the, the armor of God. He said you should stand, he said to, with, to withstand the evil day. And the evil day in practical sense would be the contradiction that you are looking at. So you have gone to pray about that sickness afflicting your home or your child or whatever it is, and you have received a note of victory, but you practically have not seen the manifestation of it. You know, um, what, it, what you would need to do is to stand. And the Bible teaches us how to stand from that Ephesians 6. And he gave us items to put on. All of these items are in the word, but it described it as a, like a soldier will put on an armor, helmet of salvation, you know, like anything that's going to affect your consciousness, because helmet is worn on the head. Anything that's going to affect your consciousness of, you know, saving or complete salvation, you know, you would have to battle that, you'd have to combat that. Anything that would, that would affect your, you know, your consciousness of righteousness, you'd have to combat that. Anything that will affect your, you know, your truth, you know, the truth, the, the, the belt of truth, you know, the shield of faith to quench every fairy that um, your feet showed with the gospel of, of peace, you know, because sometimes offense would want to come. And he did not say the gospel of Jesus or the gospel of the kingdom or the gospel of, he specified that it's the gospel of peace in this context, you know. So, like you said, strongholds, and the Bible talks about in Second Corinthians for, um, 10 verse 4 I think where he says that um, we, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against prince. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, that's it. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So um, yeah, th those are the weapons we would use to combat to clash against the weapons that the enemy is using. So I guess in the answer to that question on the flip side would also be to stand. If you are seeing contradictions stand and use the verdict that you have received to wage war as you were speaking i just remembered something this is why i'm encouraging us to go back to listen to quantum glory is on pastor's um youtube quantum glory pastor talked about the seven revelations of jesus christ like the seven revelations of the glory of jesus because remember jesus is the fullness of all of god's glory and there was a particular one he mentioned he talked about the revelation of jesus as the promise or the revelation of God, of jesus as promise and when he said that thing it just hit me because i also have those situations where you know the verdict has been ruled right but like great man said there's a contradiction and sometimes right sometimes the process of your becoming is just in the stewardship of that promise right it's not necessarily in the fulfillment it's the stewardship of the promise it is the promise as you steward that promise what happens you become so think about it as the pregnant woman you will give birth nine months is coming but then the process of nine months, the stewardship and how you're carrying that baby, what you're doing every day, it's that process that God wants to deal with you. And the interpreter will tell you what to do. Okay, first month, your baby is like a peach. Second month, your baby, all of those things. The interpreter will tell you what to do. So here's what I'm even trying to say. At the end of the day, right, what God is looking out for is the making of you right is the becoming of you and that is why the glory remember i said this thing the glory is the fulfillment of your destiny how he wants to reveal that glory is not that he did it that, that thing is too easy for him to do now he can do it the glory is the process is that despite all this person still stood 
That's what happened to Abraham, right? It's not that God couldn't give him Isaac. But to see that a man waited so long, you must, is the, he, God wanted to display the love that this person, he loves me. Look at it. He's waiting 25 years and his faith is not wavering. Do you get? So sometimes when those kind of issues are happening, you have to look at, okay, what is, the, what is the promise? All the promises are yes and amen, right? What is the promise that God wants me, that God has given me based on this verdict? And what is the stewardship that I need to have for that promise? To answer FL's question, I would want to share a little of um, my experience today. Uh, so this morning, <laughs> I reached out to FL because I have a naughty problem in my office that has lingered for over a year. And um, this, it's in fact the environment, the atmosphere in my office over time became so toxic that going to work is just so hard. And the issue graduated from just a minor misunderstanding to like a, a strive in the office. And I didn't know what it was. Um, so like great man said, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but I was just like, what is this, you know? I didn't understand it until when the courtroom series started and Pam mentioned that. So today, um, last week, I think we had met in the office because of this matter. The first time the office sat because of what was going on, um, the, the thing, the, the court room in my office, it turned against me. <laughs> and it was, it was really bad. And we sat yesterday and we were going to sit today again. Because it was, I don't want to go into details, but it was a very serious matter. I didn't know what to do. So after the command your morning prayer, the first thing I heard was sacrifice. And I don't know if we remember Apostle Bab Babs mentioned something like that, sacrifice, or was it Pada mentioned sacrifice? So I, I sowed a seed into our account. And when I was on my way to the office, the Holy Spirit asked me to reach out to Ephel. And Ma, you know, this is like the first time <laughs> that I'm reaching out to FL. I didn't give her the detail, but she sent me a scripture. Now, when I was stepping out, there was this weight, like, there was this weight. And when she sent the scripture, I read it. I was still in the taxi. But I felt that weight lift. Then when we got to the office, it was the spirit of the accuser that was playing out through this colleague, like deep, serious accusation. And I do not work in, I work in like an international context where some of these things, some of these accusation can become serious issues. So when I went into the, meet, the meeting, all the accusations that were on the table, literally before my eyes, it turned around because there was there was evidence from from one email that was sent for a tax that was supposed to go to our HQ and you know it just turned around and this lady that was it had see a lot of things were said to a lot of people about me that I did not hear. And only for the person to start saying, oh, at the end of the day, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to change, I will do this, I will do that. But, like you said, I think it was what God was. Because it was hard at some point. It, it broke me. I'm like, why, why am I dealing with this? It was what God was trying to train me for. And it was the use of the, um, the interpreter reaching out, you know. And Apostle Bob mentioned something very important. That this interpreter will look for a, 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 
Is it a... The right transaction. The right right, transaction. Yes, right transaction. You might just be doing things and then he can just leverage on one thing and you start to speak to save you from going down to the pit from corruption, you know. So the power of the interpreter is, is today I saw it in another light. And, you know, what am I using to even fight these physical battles? I got to learn a lot from how the matter ended. And I felt that's just my report that it turned yeah. around, you know. And peace have been restored to me and I believe to the, to the office. Praise Hallelujah. God. Um, just to add to what she said, this is actually what I was talking about, the utility of the gift of pastors. Now, just imagine if she was one of those people that said, I don't come close, I don't come close, uh, you know, like pastors, no, 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 no just, just imagine in the day that she needed an interpreter, her her character, her whatever it is, the limitations in her mind could have hindered because she'd be like, Ephel, you don't even have, maybe you don't even have the number in the first place, or you don't even have the relationship to even like talk to Ephel, but that's so powerful. Um, and then before um, Gil speaks, in addition to what um, great man said, um, Pastor also shared a testimony of someone who he was praying for, for the spirit of infirmity. Now, that's a case of healing, that you expect healing to be fast, right? But then what Pastor said was that as he was praying for that person, what happened was the Holy Spirit told him that God wants to make him a miracle worker. But the process of becoming that miracle worker is that he must reach out from the pain of that, you know, sickness to receive healing because he's receiving that healing to become a healer. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. So that's an example of applying the interpreter because in that case it was a con contradiction for that person but as clarity came he understood why he was still sick so the interpreter is is everything well fl was asking our questions and you know everybody was speaking i started to think about the story of the um prodigal child you know and so like uh past said something a verdict past is not a verdict executed you know, so sometimes we feel like, oh, we've done everything. Like, yes, God has said this about my life and it's not coming to pass. I feel like sometimes we don't um, receive or we don't come into the um, fulfillment of that verdict because we do not know how to receive, you know. And so, like, I just learned something from the prodigal child. You know, everybody says, oh, he took his property, he went away, squandered it and all. So I just, started, I just started to think to myself, what if he actually just collected his own property and used it wisely? You know, it would have been like, ah, my good son, well done, you have done well. You know, and the other one was just there, like he had everything, doing everything. You know, it took him seeing his brother coming back, you know, out of anger. And he's like, ah, like how far, like I've been around, I've done everything. I'm just here, you know, and his father just told him, you are here, you have everything, like everything belongs to you, but you don't even know it. And that comes to play in our lives, you know, some of our lives, because we feel like, um, somebody said something one time, I think it was Timmy, she said, Agbani Derego, she wasn't the most beautiful girl in Nigeria, but she's one that had the confidence to go out and step yeah. out and say, so sometimes we have everything, we've done everything, but the knowledge of who we are, we don't come into it and so we're just there like ah i don't think this thing is for me so sometimes when you've done everything really really check like if if you're if you're standing if everything is complete then it, it's just you holding yourself like just like you say you're the variable in the equation just put yourself in the right equation and everything will just work out fine thank you what i want to say is that as believers i i feel like we need to be more conscious of the warfare that go on around either where you work or what you do. It's very important because you may know so much scripture, you may know a lot about God's word, but if you're not conscious of the environment where you go to, let's say eight to six, you're going to, you, you suffer a lot of things. Some of it, you, you are not supposed to have suffered them. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to pay. There are some things that can't be avoided. I'm not talking regarding but I know I'm saying what I'm saying so what I'm trying to tell us is that wherever you walk whatever you do analyze sit down before anything ever happens ask yourself what are the kind of risk 
that can come because of what I do. Before it ever happens, analyze five to six of them and profile solutions before they, even, they ever happen. That already prepares you to know how to begin to apply the things you get from church, the things you get from the Holy Spirit in your workspace. I've seen a lot of people go down. And the, the real hit is just because they are believers. So what I'm trying to say is that um, being believer, being a believer should not just stop at church environment. You need to, you need to be smart. You need to be as wise as the, as the serpent wherever you walk. Because there are some things that can be avoided. You need to play the politics of the business you're in. You need to play the politics of the industry you found yourself. See, when you watch believers, or uh, unbelievers rather, when you watch the way, do you see the way they play politics? They put the normal malam. You watch the way they play politics. So what I'm trying to say is, for example, in her own case, um, imagine if she knew ahead of time that this person was going to do this. She's supposed to have just gone beyond just being diligent with her work to befriending people in the office. Have your political party very quiet. If you watch shows a lot, you will see how People who eventually emerge, how they emerge, they may not be the best of people, but they know. They know. You must know the politics of your workplace. If you don't know it, you will suffer as a believer. Most of us have seen our parents suffer, even in the civil service. It's time to be promoted. They are not promoted. And because there are some gardens where they are going to, you are not going to because you, jo you feel you're a believer. And go. Go and pray. So, summary. Know the politics. Know the risk that comes with what you do. Prepare for it before it ever hits you. I, I started a business about a month ago. And one of the things, be not just pray God, provide God, make it prosperous. I've sat down. I asked myself, what are the risks that come by the nature of this thing I do? And I've outlined no less than five and I've profiled solution. If this happens, B will be an alternative. B. So you calculate. I'm just trying to awaken don't be naive. I think that's the sum. If you are naive, they will deal with you as a believer because just being a believer alone has already made you to be time posted. So you, you must wise and pass them. Before they can hit you successfully, it go hard. But if you are not careful, see, they will hit you, hit you, hit you, then you'll be coming to pastor. Uh, also, disclaimer, pastor and Ephel are not the only people to call. The Holy Spirit will also give you <laughs> other people. There was something you said and the scripture just popped in my head and with everything every other person said, it just kept making more meaning. You said something, the, you said uh, God has already done it, right? It's just you that have not seen or become that thing yet. And this scripture came to my mind. And, uh, it is the glory of God yeah. to conceal a matter. And because we are becoming kings, it is the honor of kings to search it out. So the standing, the meeting your interpreter is you searching. Praise God. Hallelujah. One of my biggest discoveries in this series is the fact that God wants to get glory. He wants to give you treasures and he wants to punish the devil. So in the search, it's tough because remember what I said, the, the adversity is the right atmospheric climate for the manifestation of the glory of God. So that glory is sitting in the midst of chaos. It's hard. It's painful. It's sometimes even traumatizing, right? But at the end of the day, God wants to get glory. He wants you to get treasures. Every leading of God is towards the problem. Pastor taught us. So that problem, God wants to give you treasures from that problem. But he also wants to punish the devil. That's the sweetest part because you get to determine the outcome of what happens.